In this video I'm just going to show you the wit stamp tool and that the wit stamp tool can be used to create pass that can be used as input for the tool again. Now the wit stamp tool is available via Witscribe 2 from Astute Graphics and you can use it in Illustrator CC, CS6 etc. So here's a part here I'm just going to apply make with preset. I'm just going to go create some lines which I'm going to then let's say use as an input for the wit stamp tool later. So make with preset and just going to go for a sort of space in 17 points pixels uh, angle 45 degrees and you can modify how much you can see of this in via the curve make the width increase the width or sharper depends what you want right so I've actually, once I've actually got this result now I can expand this and it'll come up when you expand it it comes up with this optimized width markers they're basically the same over here as the width tool I'm going to stop it you don't have to do that you can actually stop at this point you can just it still does the expand that's the key thing now I'm going to apply effect so I'm just going to go to effect and twist so I'm just going to go for say like 23 nothing extreme so 23 just going to twist the results you've got a slightly curve you can still see that underlying image there it's been like I said they're just basic lines now what I want to do so I'm going to copy that because what I want is it to become the top object. So we bring it back in again and there it is. And I'm just going to add it to that image there. Now that's quite a nice effect in itself, just actually adding it with the underlying image. Sadly, that's not a feature within the plugin. You can't actually retain the original, which would be quite nice. But anyway, once you've done that, You'll notice you can actually says make with top object. Now the top object is this nice curved design. It's like say a source from a wit stamp. And now you can just say make with top object. And you can add that and you can actually see the design there. And of course you can now tweak that in other ways. And of course you don't have to actually apply it to the same image. That's another thing. So you've got so I've just used it to that image. I can actually undo that. I'm just going to say release. And I can actually apply it to just a standard path. I'm just going to create a path there. I'm just going to make it with a fill. So yellow. And I'm going to make another path. And I'm going to red. Make that, make that red. Okay. So once I've actually got that. Going to group that because I don't want to actually apply it to both. I want to just as apply it to the entire group. And again, I can want it as a top object, so I'm just create it as a top object there. You can still see the underlying image, and then you can add that to that, make that with top object, and you can create, like, say, interesting frame effects just by that. Which, of course, now I've still got the original image over here, I can drag it over. To there and add on top and again you can modify and I still haven't I've, I haven't expanded I can still modify it over here as well to actually bring in more or less of the original part and you of course could use instead of using squares and I only chose squares for their quick and easy but you could use obviously circles you could use grids or maybe an image trace of the original image so you could have a vector trace of that modified in particular ways and then apply these lines on top of that to create very interesting unusual vector effects and lines.